Hi, my name's Lyndall Trevena, and I'm an academic GP and a professor at the University of Sydney. Now, this is a short explanatory video to accompany a brief patient decision aid that we've developed just over the last few weeks to help people decide whether they should have the AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccine or not. We've deliberately made this brief and short. It's on one page sheet of paper, double-sided printed, so that it's designed to be um, a cheat sheet for you to use with your healthcare provider, your GP, your immunisation nurse, or your pharmacist, when you're thinking about whether to accept an offer for the vaccine or not. Um, now, we've used the latest available research to develop this tool, but as you probably know, uh, we're learning new things about COVID-19 and about the vaccines every day. So this will be um, a living document which we hope to update quite regularly. And you'll see that we'll put a date and a version number on the bottom of um, the tool if you're download it, downloading it and using it. Now, some people will want more detailed information and more complex information um, that we can't fit onto one page of um, the one sheet of paper. Uh, so we will also put up some links for a more detailed resources so that if you want that, you can drill down into that. So the first thing um, we need to think about is that there, there is a decision to be made here. And, and what is that decision? What are your options? Well, this is not about choosing between one vaccine or another. In um, many places, and in fact, uh, in Australia at the moment, you probably won't have that choice. Um, you'll be offered the AstraZeneca vaccine or a different one. And your decision is really whether to accept that offer now or not, whether to have the vaccine or not at this point in time. Uh, we haven't included information about um, what might happen in the future uh, because we really don't know what vaccines, if any, would be available to you. So really thinking about the here and now. So should you get the AstraZeneca vaccine or not? Those are your options at this point in time. And um, really to help you make that decision, what we wanna do is summarize the benefits and harms for you. So first of all, thinking about the benefits. Now you'll see here um, a larger version of the graphic that's on the patient decision aid um, that shows you um, the benefits, the main benefits, the key benefits of having the vaccine. Now, the trouble is we really don't know how many cases there's going to be in the future. We don't know whether there'll be any outbreaks. We don't know if there is one, what size it will be. Um, and so it's um, quite challenging for us to sort of put this in a way that makes sense or meaning to you. So what we've done for argument's sake is to use numbers that are very similar to the, um, the number of cases that America saw you know, during 2020, just to give you a bit of an idea of that kind of scenario where COVID escapes into the community and quite a lot of people get it. Now, there might be more, there might be less, but we're using this particular scenario. So you'll see um, two grids with dots on them here on this page. Um, the one on the left-hand side, um, represents a thousand people, each dot being one person. One on the left-hand side is a thousand people who don't have the vaccine under that hypothetical scenario. And the, the grid on the right-hand side is a thousand people who do have the vaccine. So let's take a look at um, the difference between the, a, a thousand people who have the vaccine on the left and a thousand people who don't on the right. So if we were to think about an American style outbreak, um, let's say 90 people out of those 1000 get COVID without the vaccine. Um, so all the gray people, all the gray dots on the left are the people who don't get COVID because they're doing social distancing, wearing masks, um, having lockdowns, all the sorts of things that we've been doing. And the colored dots, the 90 colored dots at the bottom are the people who get COVID-19. Now you'll see that there are three different types of COVID-19 colors there. So we've broken those um, 90 cases down into three groups. The blue dots are people who get mild COVID. 
that's the majority of people, about 65 out of those 90. They'll uh, be able to recover from, uh, from their uh, COVID-19 infection at home. The orange dots are the people who get more severe COVID and they have to go to hospital. And we estimate out of 90 people, about 22 will probably have to go to hospital. And the red dots are people who get COVID and die from it. And we estimate that around about three uh, people out of the 90 um, might die. And this is obviously across a range of age groups. This is, um, you know, depending on your healthcare setting, it might be more, it might be less. Uh, these are just rough estimates to give you a, a bit of an idea and a guide. So in summary, in this hypothetical scenario on the left, no, no vaccine, thousand people, about 90 get COVID. And of those 90, um, the majority 65 will get better at home. 22 will go to hospital and three might die. What about if one, those 1,000 people get vaccinated? You'll see that on the right-hand side. We'll see that actually only eight people get COVID if everyone's vaccinated. If it's not 100% effective, there will be some people, a small number of people for whom the vaccine doesn't stimulate enough of an immune response. But you'll see that those, um, those eight people are blue dots. So they actually get quite mild COVID and um, they'll be able to get better at home. And happily, you'll see that there doesn't seem to be any orange or red dots there on the right hand side. And we know from the studies so far that pretty much nobody uh, who's vaccinated uh, with the AstraZeneca vaccine ends up in hospital or dies from COVID-19. So if you're vaccinated and you get COVID, uh, you're one of the few that has a, a lower immune reaction, um, most likely um, you'll get a, a, a much milder form. So hopefully you can see from there the benefits are quite substantial, um, particularly if we have you know, a reasonably big outbreak. Um, and um, that's why um, most governments around the world are, are encouraging people to get vaccinated. Okay, let's have a look at the downsides of vaccination. You probably have heard a lot about side effects of vaccines. So this, this uh, another 1,000 dots or 1,000 people who get vaccinated. And uh, you'll see that about half of them, about 500 out of the 1,000, will have no side effects at all. Um, they really, they'll be just fine. Um, not even noticing um, too much of a problem where at the injection site. Up to half of people though, will we'll notice some kind of reaction. Um, that's the orange dots there. They'll have some mild side effects for about two or three days at the most. Um, it'll respond quite well to Panadol. They'll get some pain where they had the needle. They might feel a bit achy. Um, they might even get a little bit of a fever or a headache, feel quite tired. But yeah, after two or three days, it'll be fine and uh, there'll be nothing serious. And then uh, down the bottom, you'll see there's one red dot out of the 1000. Now, we, we do know that there are some severe side effects from the vaccine. Um, you might have a very severe allergic reaction that can't be predicted. Uh, or you may have one of these um, unusual blood clotting um, syndromes with the low platelet counts that um, called um, heparin induced um, thrombocytopenia pur purpura or HITS. Um, now these are quite rare and as you'll see less than one in a thousand people um, will have that kind of rare uh, but serious side effect. Um, it could be something like four to six out of a million so it's uh, way less than one person per thousand. So uh, here I um, hope you can see that um, about half of people who have the vaccine have no effects, about half of people have some mild effects and very, very rarely um, people have um, serious um, effects that well, we are constantly learning more about. So you need to weigh up the benefits and the harms and uh, at the end of the um, patient brief decision age, you'll see a little bit of a checklist of things that you might want to consider. Um, in favour of getting the vaccine, uh, do you, um, are, is it important for you to avoid getting COVID yourself? Um, is it important for you to uh, help to avoid um, giving COVID to somebody else or uh, helping to protect other people from getting COVID? 
is it important to reduce the need for all sorts of um, social restrictions like lockdown and border closures and masks and social distancing and all the things that we've been learning to live with. Uh, or there might be some other reasons that you can think of that help you um, sway towards getting the vaccine and you can actually write that down and talk to your healthcare worker about that. On the other side of the fence um, are the, the uh, things that are against uh, getting the vaccine and whether that's important to you and mainly that's around avoiding the side effects or there might be some other things that concern you. Again, you can write those down. But what we encourage you to do with this little um, exercise is to check the box against the things that are important to you and write down other things that we haven't listed and then you can take a little bit of a look at um, weighing up the benefits and the harms and it might just help you decide. So I hope you've um, found that helpful in um, thinking about uh, how to use this um, patient decision aid and understanding the, the graphs. Um, we look forward to updating this and we hope it's uh, helpful for you and your healthcare workers in, in making this decision. Thank you.